There's two universal truths I found to be true when it comes to early stage SaaS companies and the go-to-market strategies. The first one I've seen in the early stages is that you always end up mastering only one channel. And the companies that have the discipline to master that one channel win. When they try to do too many channels, they don't. The other universal truth I've seen is to get to that level of mastery for that just that one channel, you end up going through four key phases. And when you go through these four key phases, you don't give up too early and you actually go through those phases. When you go through those four phases, then you tend to be more successful in mastering that channel. You try too many channels all at once, you'll fail. You actually fail to go through these four phases, you'll also fail. But if you get this right, if you get the discipline and the focus on one channel, and it's different for every company, and you actually go through the phases of mastery, then you can accelerate the growth of your SaaS business. But here's the big question. What are the four phases? And how do you actually navigate those? And how do you pick the right channel? We're gonna dig into the four key phases that you absolutely need to know for your go-to-market strategy to master that one channel, the right channel for your business, so that you can accelerate the growth of your SaaS business. Intro. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Unstoppable. I'm TK, and on this channel, I help SaaS founders like you grow your SaaS business faster with an unstoppable strategy. Now, if you are new to this channel, welcome. I drop an episode every Sunday with actionable strategies on how to grow your SaaS business with the TK Energy. So be sure to the subscribe button and that bell icon, that way you'll get notified. Now, if you're already part of this community or you're part of my coaching programs, my people, welcome back. It's really great to see you over here. I remember in the early days of ToutApp, we had mastered one channel, and this is always true with every startup. You end up, based on the capabilities of the team and the market you're going after, there's one channel that you just get to excel in way faster when you have the right focus. And for us, it was inbound. We were just really great at inbound. And in that journey, it was when I learned about all these core principles in our ICP and building a manifesto and running the Broadway show and getting people to discover us. So we were doing that really well. And ToutApp was a sales engagement platform. So companies were using us, our software, to actually do outbound. And so we started saying, hey, inbound is great. We've cracked the code. We got to get outbound going. And no matter how many times we tried, we tried multiple times, we couldn't get outbound to work. It wasn't until I hired someone and really owned it that, that had done it before that we really truly cracked the code. But it made me wonder, like, first of all, it was really embarrassing because we, here we were selling an outbound platform, but we couldn't get outbound to work, but inbound worked really well for us. It was ironic and embarrassing. But it also made me wonder, like, what were we doing wrong? And you know, hindsight, you learn a lot, and you now that I've kind of thought through what were the things we were doing differently in outbound versus inbound, why did we win in one and not the other? One rule certainly applied. Our affinities made us really great at inbound, but not so great at outbound. But the other thing was we were skipping steps. Because it was our second channel and we were trying to get good, we were trying to rush it, and we skipped critical phases that you have to go through to master a channel which we did inadvertently for inbound, but weren't doing for outbound, which kept leading to our failure. In this episode, I'm gonna walk you through the four key phases you have to go through to actually master a channel and you go to market strategy. I'm gonna walk you through what those phases are, how to navigate them. So if you're excited to dig into phase number one, go ahead and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, and let's take a look at this. Okay, so let's take a look at this. This is what I'm gonna walk you through. First, we essentially have a chart here that I'm gonna split, split the four stages by, right? So you're gonna have phase one here, two here, three here, and four here. And basically the way it goes is as you go through these phases, you're gonna be spending more money and you're gonna be at a higher scale. But in the stage number one, phase number one, when you're just starting out, it's not a lot of money you need to spend. It's really probably more of your time and it's gonna be relatively unscalable meaning you can't just like go do a million things. It's gonna be very controlled, very unscalable, very, very focused, so you can start to actually get the ball rolling. But as you go through these phases, you're gonna actually increase in scale, increase in reach, increase in impact, and you're probably gonna spend more money to do it because you're doing so much more, but the good news is you'll get more pipeline out of it. So the first phase that you have to get into when you're taking on a new channel, that's for our case, we were doing inbound, but now we wanted to figure out outbound, or we were trying to figure out inbound in the first place. 
The first phase is essentially the learning phase. Every channel, whether you're doing inbound or outbound or SEO or ads, however you're trying to get attention and to reach your ICP and to get the manifesto to them or get your messaging out to them or get your trial out to them, each of them operate differently. It's different on how to actually engage and get att attention in LinkedIn than it is on Twitter, than it is on, say, TikTok. And I know B2B SaaS is probably not that active on TikTok, but hey, you never know. So depending on the channel, there's always this first phase where you kind of have to get the lay of the land. You have to learn on how successful people are doing it, or you use one of our coaching programs to understand how to win in that channel on what the strategy is. And you have to learn on how to operate in that channel. Once you do that, you'll try a few things, you'll measure a few things, then you'll start to understand, okay, this is kind of what the lay of the land is. I kind of understand what drives engagement, what drives attention in say Twitter or say LinkedIn or even in outbound or maybe in Facebook ads. So this learning phase is super important. What I've seen sometimes people will do is they'll go in and try to put in a lot of money and try to achieve a lot of scale and then give up on a channel because it doesn't work initially. And the big reason for that is they didn't spend the time to actually learn how to operate in that channel. And this is also exactly why companies that try to do multiple channels all at once don't do very well because they just don't have the bandwidth or the time or the resources to truly learn that one channel. And so they're like mediocre in five different channels and then they give up and fail. So that's phase number one. Once you started to master the learning phase and you start to understand the nuances of a channel and what works and what doesn't and how to structure things, then you enter into the second phase where you're gonna get a little bit more scale, you're gonna maybe spend a little bit more time and money to actually get into, okay, how do we actually generate demand, generate pipeline, generate users or trials in this, in this channel? And this is essentially what we call the shaping and experimenting phase. The thing is, there's never just one way to win with Facebook ads. There's never just one way to get attention on your LinkedIn posts. There's never just one way to win in Twitter, for example, or never just one way to do outbound. If there was one golden template to do outbound, then every company would be successful at it. So there's a little bit of, once you've learned a few things and tried a few things, there's a little bit of narrowing down, like, you know what, for our ICP, ideal customer profile, for our product, for our message, for the way we're positioning things and messaging things, we need to try two or three of these different ways of getting attention. And we need to actually run enough experiments so we can truly understand based on the data on what's working and what's not. This second phase is super important because a lot of times what people will do is say, oh, this one thing's gotta be it. And then they'll just go double down on it and it won't work and they won't measure it. They won't think of it as an experiment and then they'll give up on the channel and then they're back to square one. Which is why the second phase is about trying two or three or four, not a lot, but four different controlled experiments on how you're gonna engage and seeing over time on where you get more engagement, where you get more leads, where you get more pipeline. And based on that, then you can start to say, cool, how do we crank up the dial even more? So the difference between one and two is one, you're literally just learning the lay of the land and the strategy that works for others and best practices based on a framework that you can follow. And the second one is how do you try it for yourself, for your company, for your messaging, for your audience to see what works for your ICP? Because every ICP is different, every product is different. And then based on that, that's phase two, right? You collect a bunch of data, you see what's working. As you've done that, and this could take weeks to months depending on how diligent you wanna be about it, then you're ready to say, you know what? We have a bunch of data, we know what's working, we know what's not. We can now ratchet up on scale a little bit more and we can ratchet up on the dollar and time spent even more. And essentially what happens then is then you start to develop your own strategy for this channel and for this go to market. And the, the, the power in this is you're not just coming up with this in a vacuum, but it's coming from actual data and from actual shaping and actual attempts that you've tried, which is based on actual frameworks and best practices that you've learned. And the difference in this is you're taking a staged approach and in every stage, you're starting to crank up on the dollars, which you know is gonna get you results, and you're cranking up on the scale, you're doing it in a bigger volume or bigger reach or bigger spend, and that's what's allowing you to narrow down based on data and based on experiments and based on actual at-bats to a real go-to-market strategy. And that's phase number three. Now, I'll tell you right now, 
when we were doing inbound, we I didn't quite know this framework. I didn't know enough, I was just trying, but I methodically did this because I'm an engineer and I try to do things in a methodical way. When I tried to do outbound, we just turned it on. We tried to get to a strategy right away. We're like, what's the strategy for outbound? Let's go do it. We had a little bit of cockiness. We're like, we're the outbound company. We shouldn't know how to do outbound, let's do it. And I tried to crank up the dial on scale right from day one, and because of that, we didn't get it. When we hired someone and made it their sole job and he had his experience, he followed his own set of these stages to get to what works. He didn't figure it out on day one, but because he, that's all he owned, he went through the at-bats to get to a point where we're like, oh, you know what? This is what's working and we can scale it and we can hire 20 SDRs from there. So that's the power in this model. Now, there is a phase four and companies that ignore phase four also fail. You could do all this and still fail, which is kind of the crazy part. So I wanna go into phase four, but before I don't, let me just pause here for a second. Are you starting to see the power in this? Are you starting to see the power in for every channel you're trying to go after, you have to go through these four phases. And if you do this in a methodical way, then you're gonna be more successful. You can also see why if you try to do this across multiple channels all at once, you're less likely to win. So if you pick a channel at a time and go through these phases, then you're likely to master it and then you can move to another one, another one, and they all compound over time. And as you're going through these phases, you can then amp up spend and scale. Are you starting to see the power in this? Are you starting to see the power in this? Can I just get a yes in the comments below? Also, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It really likes it when you do that. Now also, if you're in this stage of your SaaS business where you're looking to scale your go-to-market strategy and your machine, you're looking to grow faster and you want my help in actually implementing all the ideas I present and principles I present in this channel, I invite you to check out my SaaS go-to-market coaching program. I'll link to it below. You don't have to go right now. Let's go to phase number four because it's super important. I don't want you to leave this video without knowing about it because that's really what brings it together and a lot of companies fail on this one. Phase number four is where you actually scale. And this is you hire and you spend more. Now here's the thing. Ultimately with SaaS companies, they look at, you should be looking at your CAC to LTV ratio, meaning how much did you spend to get a customer and how much is that customer worth? And you wanna make sure that ratio is at a healthy level. Now if you don't know what that ratio should be, I don't wanna go into it right now, I have an entire video on it that you can check out, I'll link to it below, you don't have to go right now, you can check it out after this. But the whole idea around it is your ratio, how much you spend to get a customer should be lower than how much that customer is worth to the lifetime value of that customer. That, that's literally all it is. And if you wanna really nerd out about it, you can watch that video below. Now, your job is to figure out what your CAC to LTV is. And there's gonna be points where as you get to a real strategy and as you start to amp up on scale and spend, if you've done this right, if you've done the channel right, then you're still gonna be really profitable on the CAC to LTV ratio, meaning your cost of customer because you're building the scalable and efficient go-to-market machine should not outweigh the actual lifetime value of the customer. If it is, then it's a bad channel. But if you actually get to phase three, that means you're doing well. And the big mistake that companies make or early stage founders make is they're like, cool, I guess we just keep doing this. What they don't do is reinvest that cash, that cash flow that's coming from the deals you're closing back into that channel. They get distracted. They try to take on multiple channels instead of scaling this one. They don't double down on it. And the most important phase is the phase where you say, you're essentially saying, let's double down on this channel, let's scale. Let's bring in more people that will own this channel and increase the dollar amount and the scale that we can do. Let's make sure we stay diligent on our strategy and our data and let's iterate on it and let's go after capitalizing on this channel in a bigger way. So what ends up happening is at this stage, let's just uh, put a little red over here um, to make this clear. At this stage, a lot of companies will get distracted. The success and the diligence that got them to this point, they'll be like, oh, that's good. We knocked it out of the park. And then they'll move on to another channel without actually making sure they continue to execute and double down on this channel, which is now working. And what ends up happening is they forgot how much work they did. These learnings get forgotten. The, the shaping and the experimentation goes away, the strategy goes away, and you start to get back to square one. You regress as a company. So this fourth stage is super important because what you're saying is, look, we have a strategy, it's working. Now it's time to amp up the dollars even more, amp up the scale even more, put in more dollars to actually hire someone to own this. And once we've got that fortified, solidified, and the discipline comp continues, then we can start to focus on another channel. And that is one of the key 
key learnings that I personally had in growing my SaaS businesses. So let's recap the four phases that you absolutely need to know. Number one, when you're going into a channel, you need to first learn the lay of the land, hook into a framework, hook into the best practices for that channel. Number two, then once you've done that, then you wanna kind of shape things together and try a couple of different strategies for out of those best practices and actually experiment to see what works for your product and your ideal customer profile. Then as things start to work, you then amp up on the spend or the time and amp up on the scale and start to hone in on your go-to-market strategy that's working for that channel. And as you've done that and as that start to, starts to work and the cost of acquisition is lower than your lifetime value, then before you move on to another channel or get distracted or move away or kind of self-destruct on like the things, success that brought you here, let go of the discipline before you do any of that, you wanna amp up on the dollars even more amp up on the scale and even more and double down on that channel and make sure that you're scaling it. Make sure that you're hiring someone to own it. Make sure that you're spending more on it because you know it's net profitable. And then you can say, cool, let's go do this again for another channel. This is the thing that I learned the hard way and that's why I'm doing this video. Now you know to master just one channel, the four stages, the four phases you have to go through for your go-to-market strategy for that channel. And once you own that one channel, then you can do it for multiple channels. And if you have the resources to have key people to own multiple channels, put one in charge of each and have them follow these four phases. You skip one of these phases, you will not be able to master the channel. You try to do that for multiple channels all at once with not enough resources and people dedicated to it, then you won't be able to master anything. And that's the catch 22 here. What you wanna do is make sure you know about these four phases, this is what I learned the hard way. And now you know them, so you can actually apply them. What you may not know is exactly how to pick the right channels and how to navigate each of these stages, each of these phases. What you may not know is what are the best practices for say LinkedIn for B2B SaaS or for ads for B2B SaaS or for outbound. This is exactly why I created my SaaS go-to-market coaching program. If you're right at that stage where you have some revenues and you're looking to scale your SaaS business and you actually wanna master your key channel and scale it, and then you wanna open up more channels and scale those, and you wanna follow this type of framework where you know what the learnings are and you can actually experiment in the right way, this is exactly why I created my go-to-market program. Right now we're accepting more members into the program. It is an application-based program. What that means is, you know, we're not looking to have a billion startups. We wanna work with the right fit clients that we can actually help. And then they happen to all be in B2B SaaS. We have over 80, 80 founders in the program now, and we're looking to open, up, open it up to a few more. So if you're building out your SaaS business and you want to work with me to actually scale your go-to-market strategy and your go-to-market machine, then I invite you to apply to join. Just go to tkcater.com slash GTM. tkcater.com slash GTM. When you go to that page, you can find out all the details about my go-to-market program, exactly how it works, what you get inside of it, and then all the way at the bottom, you'll have an application link. You just fill out your email, answer a few questions, and then you'll be able to meet with a member of my team. On that call, all we're gonna do is just ask you a few questions to understand if our go-to-market program can actually help what you're struggling with in your go-to-market strategy and machine. If we can, then you're in, we're off to the races, and we start working together. It's super simple. So. If you're scaling a SaaS business and you actually want to master the key channels that are needed to drive growth, if you want a framework to follow, if you want to work with me to drive the growth of your SaaS business, go to tkcater.com slash GTM. Also, if you got value from this video, please smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm that loves it when you do that. Also, I drop a video like this with actionable strategies on how to grow your SaaS business based on my own 15 years of experience in actually building, scaling, and exiting SaaS companies. So if you are new to the community and you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and that bell icon, that way you'll get notified every single time I drop an episode. If you also have a fellow team member, a co-founder, if you're part of a group of other founders and entrepreneurs that will get value from this video, please share it with them. It'll mean the world to me and my team. We put a lot of love into these videos. And lastly, remember, everyone needs a strategy for their life and their business. When you are with us, yours is gonna be unstoppable. I'm TK, and I'll see you in the next episode.